break in, run in, bedding in. Whether it's a camshaft, brake pads, or piston rings, it has to happen. Essentially, it's just a fancy way of saying those parts have to mate together. When those parts rub together, Charles, they have to find that happy spot together. Yeah, in the olden days, the tolerances were really loose, so break-in actually really stuff had to mate into each other. <laughs> kind of broke yeah, its way in. <laughs> in its way in. With modern stuff, surface finishes have been dialed in, that ring materials and how the rings are made, they're coatings, coatings way more advanced now, but still, it still has to happen. There's still has still to happen. That last little bit of wear still has to happen. Now what's interesting is, speaking of camshafts, I used to do some work with the guys at Competition Cams, and they have a device called a Spintron, which can run the valve train completely separate from the engine. You've actually kind of built your own version of a Spintron, yep. but for piston rings and cylinders. Mm -hmm. So you can run the piston and ring separate from the rest of the engine. So we can actually kind of see what's actually happening. How long does it take for that break-in process to begin and kind of settle in a little bit? And we can test all the variables, the coatings on the rings, the ring material, what lubrication you use during break-in. We can go down a crazy rabbit trail. Today, we're just gonna focus on just the basics, yep. right? And to see how much time it takes and what happens when we do through that. But the interesting thing is, so back to the camshafts, is when we did those testing, with the Spintron, we found that the cam and lifter were actually breaking in within three minutes. 2,000 RPM, that was only 6,000 cycles. Yeah. And actually, we're, no, yeah. I'm wrong, because the camshaft only turns at 50% of crankshaft speed, so it was only 3,000 cycles for the cam and lifter to actually mate together and to wear in. So I think we should put Piston cylinder on this and we'll spin it and see. Spin it and see. If you don't know, that's the study of friction, wear, and lubrication. And this was a really fun tribology project today. We didn't know what, we really didn't know what was gonna happen. No idea. No clue, mm -hmm. right? But what we were able to see is that, okay, three minutes, didn't get it done. But at 120 RPM for 10 minutes, that 1,200 cycles, it's not ginormous, but you can see that second ring already broken in. is a tapered face ring, so the, only that very bottom line of contact is right mm -hmm. there. And it's full the way around. Yep. All the way around, there's that one little line of contact. So the second ring is just beginning to fully break in at 1,200 cycles. But the top ring was amazing. Yeah, that was what we were not expecting. Well, it was a ductal molly ring, so that type of ring material is much softer than the PVD type like CRN mm -hmm. and titanium nitride, much, much harder. So it's really about a third the hardness of those PVD coatings. So you would expect it to basically begin to wear in a little bit quicker. But yeah, 1,200 cycles, you can see that line of contact full round. So it's neat to see that in the Nicosil cylinder is basically almost untouched. As we expected, the RA dropped just a small amount, less than a point. But drop, right off drop. the bat. Right off the bat, and then it really didn't change. So the rings were doing all, all the break-in at right. that point. 
And we actually see that on the load meter. Yep. On the CNC. It started off a little bit higher, came down. Even when we ran it again the second time, it started off a little bit higher, came down, leveled in. So it was right around 10 to 11% load by the time it finished running. So it, it was basically run in. And we knew it was doing something because 120 cycles that there was a little bit of streaking going on, which we expect from, from the rings. But by, we got, by the time we got to the 1200, the streaking was all gone. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Once you clean that cylinder out, all traces of anything that you could visibly see were gone. You can still see some stuff with the microscope, but you could only see it at the very top where there's no lubrication because mm -hmm. it's all run down or the very bottom where that debris would actually kind of puddle because there's no filter in this application. No. So it's, he already knows what I'm thinking. Proper lubrication is the four R's. Right oil, right place, right time, right amount. And this little test actually played that whole thing in because at the bottom, there was plenty of oil, but there was no filter, so it was dirty. So you could see a little bit of streaking there from that. But when you went to the sides... It was perfect. The cylinders looked beautiful at 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Because there was still some lube there, but there wasn't the debris. So it was just... I know. I can't help it. I'm the motor oil geek. There's a reason for this. Yep. This is too fun to be able to see that. So. Okay, we won't bore you with the other things we're about to do because uh, this could be about a three hour video if we didn't shut up now. So yep. if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you hit the subscribe button because you're going to want to see more of this if you liked it this far. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it.